I spent a lot of my childhood on a, a really rural farm in Ireland, you know, in County Roscommon, in a place called Ballancurry, which is like real. They didn't have electricity when I first used to go. No toilet, no water in the house. You went down to the spring in the fields. And for a child, for me, I loved it because you're allowed to run wild, no yeah. shoes, jump on the back of the donkey, no saddle, off yeah. you'd go. Yeah, and, and so that, that was what summer holidays and things. That's spent a proper there. summer holiday, yeah. but loads of cousins, you know, and kids could go in the pub in Ireland as well. So off we go, and it, it was fabulous. And that planted the seed that then. Was, and I always said, to, I always wanted, you know, I thought, always fancied myself with a bit of land and a couple of bit of livestock. Of course, I never thought it'd ever happen. So how did it happen? Because you've got this kind of like double life for a while. You've got your life in London, your TV career, and dressed in suits and going to show. Don't like wearing dunes. suits, Ruth. I see. So Getting were you doing... Were you you doing look so like smart, too. Life. Were you then whizzing down to... Well, I'd leave house. Kent looking like Cat Weasel. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> My hair on end, like a Maori's hut. I hadn't yeah. had the cuffs, unshaven, you know what I mean? Stinking to high heaven. And you get in the studio and they wash you, they dress you, and on you go in your nice suit. But that's the joy for me of being in the countryside. You know, you can sort of let yourself go. I do, anyway. I have friends who come down and go, oh, when did you last have a wash? Yes. <laughs> I've got no shoes and I've got feet like a hobbit. And do you sort of look at your TV life and your broadcast life in general and think, this earns me the money to live the way I really yeah. want to live? Yeah. yeah? Well, all this... All these animals, because they're all rescue, all the sheep were all, all, all hand-reared lambs when I got them, you know, farmers would bring them to me. So I'd hand rear them all. And um, yes, it does, because it's expensive. You know, people say, oh, I'm going to move to the country, I'm going to get a few animals. Well, you must think, you know, it's a bit of a sinkhole you put money in. You know, like pig nuts cost sure. a fortune to feed sure. the pigs. <laughs> sure. And the thing is, I was reading in the book, so there was you, and you go to the loo, and you like to spend a bit of time in the loo as I well. I love it, I mean, having so, a read. <laughs> so, to, having a read. So, tell us about one day you were having a read, and all the dogs and things started playing up. Well, I was in the downstairs loo having a nice read, you know, mm -hmm. sitting there, a bit of peace. You know, I could mm -hmm. sit there for hours, just sitting there. Mm -hmm. And the dogs were going crazy. In the end, I thought, what's up with them? So I just got up and literally shuffled through, you know, with the pants around my ankles. And here's Dot, my cow in the kitchen. And she was eating a bit of yellow fish that was from the night before in the sink. <laughs> so then I'm going to get out. So I opened the fridge thinking I'll get a lettuce, that might lure her. So she puts her head in the fridge, wrecks it, oh. lifts her tail and wheeze all over the place. But excited. Yeah, but highly excited. They don't just wee, it's like a... Like a fire hose. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they went up the wall. So my trousers around my ankles were sodden, so I kicked them off. And I eventually get it out with a tub of parsley. Am I going down the garden and I'm thinking, I hope nobody walks in now. Because <laughs> I'm naked from the race down with a cow. <laughs> leading her into the fields. There's got to be a TV programme in this. <laughs> All creatures bit. great and small. Nobody would believe it. I had Christine the killer sheep, you know, and then yes. the geese. But, you, but, but is it because they're rescue animals, they have issues, maybe, that you're taking on? It's like a lot of delinquents that you've so, uh, adopted. I, 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 yeah, one of my lambs, I mean, she was a really sweet little lamb, and she loved sniffing flowers, and she'd lie in the garden. So I named her after the gardener, Christine Walkenden. And uh, next thing, the shit puberty, we brought the ram in, she battered the ram, wouldn't let the ram near her. <laughs> And she'd had but tracked us. You had to really watch right. her. Yeah. yeah. Have you been attacked by any of your animals then? Uh, Christine's gone for me, went for me a few uh -huh. times. And Dot the cow, when she went a bit, mm, <laughs> she'd like chase you, so legging it across the fields. Well, we've brought some animals into the studio. Oh, these are today. two beauties, these. Oh. Right. The, the, from, all, from your TV programme on a Thursday night on ITV. Oh, mm. Maya, um, where's me babies, yeah. eh? So Tell all your work is from, from Battersea. Yeah. The, the, these are from Battersea Dogs Home, yeah? Yeah. This is Thank Thelma you. and Louise. <gasps> Thelma and Louise. Yeah. Thelma's the small one, Louise is yeah. the bigger one. And right. what happened was they were dumped. They were dumped by the roadside. I'd like to meet the people who did it, actually. Together? They were found dumped together? Dumped together. Hello, and darling. the thing is, they're both... Come here, little one. She's looking, she's looking at our plastic cat. Uh, oh, she's look. fascinated, look, <laughs> the plastic <laughs> market. She's really she's like, no, no, don't like let yourself down for the plastic cat yeah. on the telly. Yeah. I'm sorry, so they were This found... was a bad idea, who well, put a plastic, put plastic cat, cat there? Dear, she's dear, off dear. now, and oh, look at the plastic. <laughs> but they were dumped... Oh, she's having a way on the house. She's having a way. 
I'm trying to give you two the hard sell here. <laughs> the, the, they make a show of me. Would, would they have to go as a pair? The thing is, they're inseparable. They absolutely love each other. Now, look at her, fascinated with the cat. And they can't go as, no. you know, they can't be split up, which is why we're having trouble rehoming them. Because not, she's a Saluki. Yeah. And she's this one's a... Are she's you having another you way. Your way? She's having another <laughs> way behind me and all. I'm it's fine. It's the nerves of t live TV, isn't it's it? It's the darling? nerves of telly. I've, 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 seen, I've seen the loose women doing it, you know what I mean? <laughs> I really have. But, yeah, and it's, so it's difficult to rehome them because they're a pair, but at the same time, they're a totally different pair. Aren't they? But they're Very such different. lovely dogs. And apart from weighing on hay, they're really well behaved. Paul, how do you resist? I absolutely love the show, Love of Dogs. You know I do. I have how terrible do you trouble. resist taking them all home? Terrible trouble. I mean, seriously, you know. And it's, it's not about the way they look for me. It's their background stories. Like, one came in the other day, heavily pregnant, a little mongrel, and she'd been dumped on Hampstead Heath on bonfire night, oh. and she was in a state of shock. And it's, you, I never get, uh, I'm, I'm always shocked by it. I never get used to it, you know what I mean? The way people treat their animals. It really upsets me and it makes me so angry. Yeah, mm. yeah. I'd like to run amok with a baseball bat, to tell mm. you the truth, Amy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's so, it just, it's, there's no need for it because they're not judgmental in the home. They just, you know, just bring your dog in. I know. Say well, hello. Yes, well, thank dog. goodness hey, there are people. Girl. Ruth, don't sit down. There's no, weed on, weed on there. She weed on the arm. I've weed on that bit, she though. Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank goodness there are people like you out there giving love and homes. And all the staff at Bassett. And all the staff at everybody.